Hi everybody, welcome to the King's Banquet. Um, I'm Leanna. I'm Elijah. And we're here to feed you the truth. That was not natural. I didn't say that. Okay, okay, do it again, do it again. I've had a calling for a long time to make a video like this and to put things out on how to live the Christian life and I brought my husband along to join me. Are you excited to be here or? <laughs> yeah, we'll see how we do. It's gonna be a little different talking to an audience behind a camera than in person, so. Yeah, but Elijah is really passionate about speaking about the Lord and we love the Lord. And so we're here just to share that with everybody else. I feel like nowadays there's a lot of negativity online and things like that. And so we kind of just wanted to bring in a little bit of light in the midst of all the darkness. Mm -hmm. So we live in Tennessee. Elijah's in the Air Force and we've been stationed here. Well, you've been stationed here for about three years and I've been here for about two. And we have a one-year-old son named Micah and a four-month-old named Gabriel. So... That's our family and our life. And then we also have a two-year-old puppy named Lila. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think we're just gonna go into our story today. So yeah. how we met was a little like cliche, I guess, because we <laughs> met on Bumble, but like not condoning it or <clears throat> saying that it's a good platform or anything because it's a worldly platform, but well, we were at the place in our lives where <clears throat> I was ready to get married and I was focused on the Lord, but I was just in my heart, like I just felt like I was ready and you were at the place to, you know, meet me and we were two ships at the night in the night and we we're from the same town and but never met each other and never knew of each other and we were, had the same friends and never even heard about each other's names but then all of a sudden meet and it just clicked and worked. You know. And Elijah was homeschooled, so that was partially a big reason why we didn't met. If he had gone to my high school, we probably would have known each other. But probably wouldn't have gone to your high school, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, um, so the backstory behind all of this is, I had dated a lot of people, um, and I didn't really know who I was. I didn't really have a relationship with God or anything, but I was tired of struggling, I was tired of searching and things like that, and I was looking for a, I was looking for God and I was looking for a man to step up and actually be a man, because I hadn't really seen that ever in my life. So, I <laughs> was on Pinterest and I saw this woman talking about how you should write out everything that you want in a man and pray over it every night. So I did that, I wrote out everything that I wanted and I was like, you know what, um, I am not going to settle and I'm not going to date anybody who doesn't have all of these things. And after I made that list, I think it was 10 days later, um, I was on Bumble and Elijah was the first person that I was like semi interested in and so I messaged him um, <laughs> and he extended the time which well, actually, he extended the time and then I messaged him. And so so that was, like, the reason why I kind of was like, okay. Well, I was like, yeah, he's cute. I'll, I'll give him a shot. And so then we met up. And on the first date, he checked off a lot of the things. I think there was, like, three that were missing. And I was like, mm, those three. And I was like, that's a deal breaker. I was like, I, I'm done. And so I went home. And my uncle was there with my grandmother. And he was actually... I had just gotten home from our date because our first date was at the beach and it was like eight hours long. So I had just gotten home and I was like, yeah, he was all right, but I didn't check everything off my list. You know, I was like, so that stinks. <laughs> and um, Elijah was actually supposed to be leaving a week later to come to Tennessee because he had just gotten done all of his training and everything and he was headed to where he was now stationed. And so I was like, well, you know, he's leaving anyway, so it doesn't really make a big deal. And my uncle was like, why don't you give him another shot? So I went and I messaged you back and I was like, okay, well, I guess we can go. And then after that, it was game over. He checked everything off and I was like, this is my husband. And so do you want to talk about like our, the long date that changed everything? I mean, you can talk about it. I mean, well, you're the one who planned it, so. Well, I didn't really plan it with that in mind. I mean, 
I wasn't, yeah. Why were you on Bumble? I, I don't know. I was just lonely, and I told the Lord, like, a long time ago when I was younger and first got saved that I would never get married or have kids or anything, because I just wanted to be like Paul, and <laughs> I just wanted to just be dedicated. Uh, but when I went home and my family was kind of in pieces at that point, like, I just felt like I was alone, so... I feel like the Lord used, you know, something that necessarily isn't always a good thing or can be a distraction for some people. He used it to be a blessing mm -hmm. in our lives and have us meet. And, yeah, and I don't know. I just like hanging out with you, so I want to make sure that we did fun things and you knew more and more about me every time we met up and hung out. And I wasn't really thinking of dating at that point. Cause yeah. I even told her he that did. I was like, we're not dating, we're not thinking about dating, we're just friends. Yeah. I was like, in, in five years when I get out the military and you get out of college, I was like, then we'll talk about it. But on this long date, so what the date was, was he picked me up, I think around nine. It was pretty early and I didn't get home until like one in the middle of the night. So our date was all day long. And so we had already met at the beach and then we went bowling and went out to breakfast and so this was all in like the span of four days so we had like three dates in four days mm -hmm. because he was leaving to go to the military so then he was like well i'm planning this special date and i'm not telling you what it is and i was like okay so we went not to some date but i was like i'm planning this special like day <laughs> this special day it was a date anyway <laughs> you guys tell me if this is leading somebody on but he picked all these places around our area that meant something in his life and so we would go there and at each spot he would have a song to listen to and something to eat and like so I could you know like experience all the senses like there was you know the music that he would have been listening to the things that he would have been eating and it was just yeah. all things that meant something that's to cool you. so it's like that's hey, a get, date it's like it's not a date it's yes, just it. like a look inside of a, you know my life for a second because i'm also one of those people i don't believe in platonic relationships and you do so yeah. i'm just saying yeah just because you don't believe in it so you were just oh <laughs> he's so cute <laughs> but yeah anyway so he took me to all these places um and then this date we went <laughs> what really changed was we went to the beach again but we went to a different beach this time and we were sitting there and we were honestly like this close and he was on like a little log and I was just standing next to him and then I was like, why am I just standing? So I went and sat next to him and then he like looked at me and we made like lingering eye contact and I was like, oh, I really like him. And then he like looked away and then got up and walked to the water. And then we were like playing in the water and stuff. It sounds weird. <laughs> we... It's almost like a movie though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's like we were sitting there just looking out across the water. I'm sitting there on a log and then we weren't even talking. I don't know why. <laughs> we like that was like one of the only times where we were like quiet. Yeah. Uh, the majority of the time we were talking. But I knew that I liked him because I have a really hard time like with like awkward silence with people. But like with you, the quiet was just as easy as like well, us almost, talking. Yeah, it was almost weird though, because I'm just sitting there on the log and I'm just <laughs> looking out in the water and then you're just next to me like. <laughs> and then I was you like sit down, to then you over. like sit down and you're like. <laughs> That's why I got up, I was like, okay. Our paths are very different though, but we're about to get into that, so. So at the end of this date, we had we literally did everything. We went out to eat, we went to the beach, we went and saw fireworks. So at the end of the night, he's dropping me off at my mom's house, and I'm sitting in the, <laughs> I'm sitting in the car waiting to get out, and I'm like, "So, are you gonna do it already?" <laughs> and he's like, "Do what?" And so I grab his face and I go in to kiss like, him, full blown, like fingers interlocked <laughs> behind my neck. And so you're shaking, you're shaking the thing. Oh, sorry, sorry. But yeah, so I'm like, I'm getting ready. I'm going in to kiss you, and I've never been curved so hard in my life. This was hands down to this day the most embarrassing thing. Because I, I had, I honestly had no idea. You know, maybe it was because of my immaturity in that area. But he had I never. I was just sitting there like, why is she waiting in this car? Like, I pull up. 
and just sit there. And this was the second time in the entire, all the dates that we had. That was the first time on the log that was quiet, and then this so we just pull up. Boom. And I'm like, she's gonna get out? And then you're just like, are you gonna do it already? <laughs> <laughs> and so he curves me, needless to like, say. Oh, like full he, body roll. It was, yeah. His head hit the window. And it he did. It almost hit the window. Yeah, he like slid down. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, what is happening? So I'm so embarrassed. He had, I brought my backpack and so he stuck like his iPad. Oh, like his airpods everything was in my backpack and I'm literally wearing his sweatshirt because it was cold by this time And so I just take everything out of the car and I run. well you didn't you sat there for a second Yeah, I, I was well. I was shocked. You didn't even say anything. You just yeah, I was I was stunned like I didn't even know what to do I've never <laughs> this sounds so bad, but I've never been like turned down like that. So I was like, oh man I was like, This is really bad and So I grabbed my stuff and I ran inside and I was sobbing. I was hysterically crying. And I'm running up the stairs to go see my mom. And so I get inside, I shut the door, and I lean up against the door. And she's like, how was the date? And I'm crying because I was so embarrassed. And I was like, I'm going to marry him. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Our son woke up from his nap. And then Elijah needed a snack break. Snack break. <laughs> but we are back. So I was just finishing saying that... We were marry me. Yes, that I was. So I told my, I went upstairs and told my mom that I was gonna marry him. And so what was going on behind the scenes was Elijah was in his car texting me this really long message about who I am um, in Christ and how much the Lord loves me and how he actually has never kissed anybody, has never slept with anybody, or done any of that. So that was what was happening. But do you wanna? I don't even remember what the message says exactly, but yeah, that was the gist of it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, because I said it in the car, um, I tried to give you a, a brief, you know, thing, but you weren't really listening. You were just, you know, just zoned out. Listening. I was, <laughs> I was just, it was so But I was just letting you know shocked. who you are, and yeah, I said those things about myself to give context, but it was more so just about, like, how God sees you, how much he loves you, and how... It's not a meat market, we're not just testing the flight for the week to see what we like and don't like. It's just like, no, it's like, um, we're going to do this and it's going to be serious and it's going to be God-centered and focused. And it's so funny that I was literally telling my mom that I was going to marry him before I even knew all of that. So at this point, I just thought that I was, I don't know, <laughs> I just thought that he didn't like me that way and didn't see me that way. So, but it's funny that I, like, I just knew, I knew that he, I was going to marry him. Yeah. But. Yeah, I didn't know this guy. I didn't that same feeling. <laughs> He's lying. He's lying. He knew it from the second he saw me. Second second I messaged you. You we were yeah. like, that's the one. Yeah. Pulled right up there. Uh, pulled up to pick me up from my house. Just, just, but anyway. Yeah, pulled up to pick me from my house. Just pulled all the way up. Nestled up against the steering wheel. Just, Hello, my name's Leanna. I'm like, dang, I didn't know how you can get that close to the steering wheel. <laughs> I, for height reference, I'm I'm five one, but I say I'm five two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm little, so my legs are little, so I have to be really close to the steering wheel. But <laughs> anyway, um, so he sent that message, but my phone was dead, so I didn't get the message until the next morning. So I, yeah. I, I just didn't want to, I, I wasn't even trying, my phone was on one person, but I wasn't even trying to look at my phone because I was like, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. But I woke up and I got that message and then I accidentally, so I sent something back and then um, he replied to me and I asked him at the end of my message, I was like, like do you still want to continue this? And he said, um, no I do, but I thought he said, no I don't. And so I was distraught. I was like, oh my goodness. I went to work and I would like go in the back room and cry and I'd be like, how could this guy like say all this awesome and nice things about me and then just leave me hanging like that? And then my friend looked at my ma my phone and she was like, Leanna, he said that he does want to continue. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, duh. <laughs> so then we met up that day so I could give you all your stuff back. And... 
the rest is history. We talked every single night after that. Probably for like a minimum of six hours. We would talk every single night. Yeah, at the end of work, yeah. Yeah. So we would talk from when he got out of work, which was probably because he's, Tennessee is an hour behind because we're from the East Coast. We're from Connecticut. So Tennessee is an hour behind. So he would get out around four, so five my time. And then we would talk from then until we went to bed at like one every single night. Sometimes I fall asleep earlier. Sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, so I just, I didn't know what was different about him. But come to find out later that it wasn't him at all. It was actually Christ in him that I wanted. I mean, you know, you were a bonus, but I was actually searching for God. Cherry on top. What yeah, thing? yeah. <laughs> you were just a little cherry, cherry on top. But, um, yeah, so. What else is there to say? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we have to go into us dating. Yeah. Yeah, so we talked, so he came and saw me every, pretty much every single month. He would come, like once a month, and we would see each other for about, like, a long weekend, or he would sometimes just come for a weekend. Um, and then it was my birthday, and so we went up to Boston, and we, yeah, we went, I went up to Boston, we spent the long weekend in Boston, and then like a few days later, he was getting his wisdom teeth out, and he was like, do you want, because he was getting his wisdom teeth out the day before my birthday. Mm -hmm. So he came up earlier for my birthday to do the whole Boston trip, and then it was my actual birthday. And so he was like, do you want to come to Tennessee for my birthday? And I was like, yeah, of course. And so this is like the turning point in our relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if you know this, but my grandmother, because um, it was like, I don't even know. It was probably like 9 o'clock at night that he asked me to go and to fly out the next day. And so I went up to my grandmother and I was like, are you busy tomorrow? Because I'd really like for you to drive me to the airport. And she was like, absolutely not. She was like, not like done with our, you know, but we were, we were always going back and forth. So we were traveling all the time. And she was like, oh my gosh, like you just need to chill out, girl. You know, like settle down. And so then I looked at her and this was like the first time I ever like truly told her how I felt about him and I was like Grammy I was like I want to marry him I was like I would do anything to be with this guy like I would do anything and so at this point we had only been dating for nine months and um I was like yeah I want to be with him he's the one I was like and I'm I this is I I want to be with him I was like so please drive me and so she was like okay fine so she drove me to the airport and I never left Tennessee <laughs> so stuck Chained. You're not funny. <laughs> but yeah, so he ha I had a flight planned for that Sunday. So I came in on like a Friday and I was supposed to leave that Sunday. But I slept through it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I pretended to sleep through it, the alarm, so that oh, way. Oh, I missed my alarm. I'm just tired. Let's just, let's just stay here. Yeah, so that's exactly what I did. I was like, we're just going to stay. So then I just stayed. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just go the next weekend. So he booked another flight for a week out. So then the next Sunday came, and I sat up in bed. And I said, I really don't want to leave. And he said, I really don't want you to leave. And so he was still living in his dorms at this time. And so I kind of, like, moved into his dorm rooms. And I was like, well, I'm not living here if we're not married. I was like, so, like, I have to find a place and I have to do all this stuff. Um, so I was getting all of my eggs in the basket. Yeah, <laughs> I was getting all my eggs in the basket. Trying to figure out where to, I was going to live out here and my job and everything. And he was actually going and buying a ring and doing all of his stuff on his end. And so, like, a few days later, I'm like, I go, I'm, and we're in the car driving, and I just start sobbing, because he's been, like, distant, like, there, he would, like, leave the dorm for hours, and I wouldn't know where he was, or he would go take secret phone calls and stuff like this, and so I was finally, like, okay, did you not want me to move here, like, was I stepping in, was I stepping on your territory, and I'm sobbing, and then you <laughs> get so fed up with it that you're, like, I don't know, would you say? Because you wanted to leave, you're, like, yeah. yeah. I think I did the wrong thing. I just want to go home and blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, well, that kind of sucks because I was planning on proposing. That is not how you said it. He said, 
He said, shut up. <laughs> he said, I was buying the ring. I was asking your family for permission. <laughs> and I was making sure that the ring was right. He was like, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were about to get out of the car. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we, we were at a like, red light. And I was no, like. <laughs> we were like, I think we were out front of the dorms. And you're like, I'm not going in there with you. You're like, I want to go home. Like, I'll figure out a way home. Oh, and you were like, I'm just going to start walking. <laughs> And then you're about to get out, and then I was like... I'm passionate. I'm, that's what I like to say. I'm passionate mm -hmm. when I say something. But yeah, so I was about to get ready to go. And then he um, proposed to me. So then the next day, he actually went and proposed to me. Mm -hmm. And we'll have pictures. So we'll be somewhere around here. <laughs> but yeah, so he went and actually proposed to me. And, um, and then a week later, we went and we eloped and got married. And so I was able to stay here. And then a month later, we bought this house um, and found out we were having a baby. And yeah. Does the dude, a girl, a boy, a boy, and a dog? <laughs> Just following Christ. <laughs> but yeah, so that is our story. And that's how we came together and how God brought us together. So we hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, so we'll do our testimonies individually, like we'll talk about them one at a time. Because he found Christ at 15, and then I didn't find, yeah, he he knew about God at 15. And then you found him in and out, and then it took a little bit. But then I found God about two years ago, but my story is also, <laughs> you know dying to yourself and everything we're working on it but so yeah i hope that you guys enjoyed um and we're so happy that you could be here and hear our story and we hope that you can be part of our family now so but we're all part of the family well just brothers and sisters in christ amen so <laughs> bye